disavowed. For now, Mark is rogue. Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome back, this is Force, and here today I'm going to be providing you with a guide to being a solo rogue in the Division. I think a lot of people uh, really initially thought that the Dark Zone would be filled with groups of four, and that people playing by themselves could never get anything done. I'm here to tell you that not only can you get stuff done, but you can effectively go rogue and still survive, collect your bounty, and pick up any of the sweet loot that you get off of other players. Here in this guide, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to do that very thing. It's broken up into four main pillars. It's picking your battles, having an escape plan, bringing the right stuff, and knowing when to quit. So let's go over each of those in detail to help you be the best rogue you can be. So number one is picking your battles. I think this goes without saying. Being the lone man on the block without having a team to back you up, you're going to need to know when to engage and when not to engage. And it's not as simple as just counting up the numbers. If there's four people and one of you and they appear to be in a group, probably not the best idea to attack unless you could get the element of surprise maybe while they're extracting but generally speaking you're going to want to engage groups of one to three many more than that you're going to have a really hard time now along with counting the numbers communication is key one of the great things that they decided to do with this game was add local area communication so not only can you chat with your team through in-game voice but people in your nearby vicinity can hear what you're saying you can use Use this greatly to your advantage if you come up to some people talk with them and be like hey have you guys seen rogues around a adding an element of misdirection is very advantageous for you getting the element of surprise which is oh so important especially when you're outnumbered if you're up against two or three other people downing one of them quickly before the others know what's going on is going to give you your best chances to successfully engage that group in fact you could say we're employing a little bit of role playing here as we pretend to be everyone's friend Hey, how's it going? You seen any rogues around here? You get any sweet loot? And then when they turn their back, you shoot them in the face. And before everyone gets angry, remember, going rogue is just part of this game. So all we're doing is playing the game. Judge your situations accordingly, engage when you think you've got the upper hand, and take them down as soon as possible. Tip number two is to have an escape plan. So once you've engaged, you've gone rogue, you've taken out the enemy, and you've picked up their loot, you better get moving because the one true fact about going rogue solo compared to going rogue as a group is that holding your ground is much much more difficult. A group of four people, two groups of a total of eight people, can do a pretty good job of holding up a set location, especially when they can cover their flanking corners. But when you're by yourself, if literally four people rush you, you likely can't kill them in time before they'll overwhelm you and have the firepower to take you down. So hoofing it is your best bet. Know where you're going. Now, I can't give you too many hints here simply because this is just a matter of playing the game and knowing the dark zone. The more that you play, the more you're going to be aware of any rooftops you have access to, any underground areas you can enter, any corners that you can hide in. The more you play, the more you'll know the map, the better off you'll be going rogue solo. Now in the process of evading the people who are most certainly chasing you, make sure you're dodging and weaving, trying to break line of sight as much as possible using vehicles to get in between you and the enemies chasing from behind you and if you can help it don't get shot because getting shot will extend the duration of your rogue countdown making it take that much longer until you're free and clear and once you finally evaded your captors collected the bounty that was on your head make sure you go ahead and refill enter those nearby checkpoints and fill up any of the ammunition and grenades that you may have used Tip number three is to bring the right stuff, and this comes down quite simply to your weapon selection, skills, and your stats. So let's start off with weapons. I found the most success using an assault rifle, and then either a close range weapon, like an SMG or shotgun. Shotgun, obviously a nice close range weapon. SMG, surprisingly effective at taking people down. It's got very little recoil and shoots incredibly fast. I found that actually to be a very good alternative to a shotgun. Or the assault rifle and a marksman rifle for you to have a long range option. I spend most of my time with the assault rifle marksman rifle combo 
because the marksman rifle does nice burst damage and then I could swap to the assault rifle to finish them off or in worst case scenarios I'd whip out that pistol the uh, second thing is your skills now of course when the game fully is out we're gonna have access to a wide array of skills but truthfully I can't see anything possibly being more useful than the skills that we had access to in the beta and that is the pulse and first aid now with pulse we take the modifier of scrambler and this is so incredibly vital we go back to picking your battles and judging the situation using pulse to see how many people are around you is a huge component to it and with the scrambler modification what this allows you to do is be not pulsed by the other people so they can't pulse and see you through the map but you can pulse and see them now in first aid we didn't have modifiers in the beta but at launch we're gonna have access to overdose which I'm assuming is going to be the best choice it's basically gonna give you better heals and even extend your health beyond your normal rating so it's just gonna make you very tanky which is very very important and that brings us to the final thing, which is stats. So we have three things that we can increase. We can increase our weapon damage, our health, and the effectiveness of our skills. It seems as if it's a no-brainer that we will go with firearms for weapon damage and stamina for more health. While having a better heal or a more damaging grenade is great, all of your skills have pretty long cooldowns and so increasing their effectiveness isn't going to help you consistently whereas having more stamina always having a higher health pool and having more weapon damage constantly is something that is with your side at every engagement none of those things will be going on cooldown this was the meta that we saw in the beta certainly things could change at release but it seems pretty intuitive that having more weapon damage and having higher health if we had to choose two to stack those would be the two that we would focus on and then of course you know give yourself enough tech to get any of the perks that you need on your weapons and the last tip is knowing when to call it quits it happened several times during the beta I eventually got to a point where many people on the server in the dark zone that I was in knew that I was the guy who went rogue I was the guy who shot them not 10 minutes earlier once you get to that point of notoriety, sure, it can be fun to uh, it, bask in it, but at the same time, if everyone knows that you're likely to go rogue, you lose what you need to be a successful solo rogue, and that is that element of surprise. When and if that eventually happens, it's probably time to swap servers. You can either do this by joining up with one of your friends on your friend list servers, or just using matchmaking. Go into matchmaking once you hit a checkpoint, queue up for another Dark Zone group, you'll you'll load into that group and then you're on a brand new surfer and you can continue your rampage there all right guys that is going to do it here for this video a little guide to being a solo rogue in the division hope you enjoyed it if you have any additional tips and hints that i didn't talk about please be sure to include those in the comment section below thanks so much for watching guys and until next time i'll see you later